G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and in today's video I'll be showing you a quick trick on how you could import an XML file from your Marketing Cloud FTP into your Salesforce Marketing Cloud content so that you can use it in your data extensions and emails. So what I have for today is an XML file that I've downloaded and placed onto my Salesforce Marketing Cloud FTP. Now I got this file from the W3 Schools XML example files. I've downloaded the food menu item here. You can find this page in the link description below. You can also Google it yourself by typing sample XML file into Google. That's the first result just here. So our goal for today is to import that simple.xml file. So we'll start off in Automation Studio. I'm going to create myself a new automation so I can track the progress of the file import. I'll call this one my XML import. And go done. I we'll use a schedule as my starting source. And of course, let's make ourselves a brand new import file definition. So I'll go choose and then create new import definition. I'll call this one my XML import. And then we'll go next. Now here's the important part. It's found my file in my import FTP directory. So I can copy my simple.xml file, copy that name and paste into the name pattern below. And of course it has found the file match. Perfect. On the right hand side, we want to import this not as a comma delimited file like a CSV. We're instead going to use the tab delimiter. We'll also untick the quotes and the bad rows for data, and then we'll go next. Now on this screen, we have to of course put a destination data extension which we haven't got yet. So we jump over into our data extensions. Let's make ourselves a new data extension. I've got my XML folder ready to go. So I'll go create a new standard data extension. Now this one's gonna be my XML sample import. And then we'll go next. Now what we can do here, we only need two fields. The first one is gonna be the XML blob. So I'm just gonna call this one blob. But very importantly, we wanna put some extra characters after this word. Specifically, underscore, underscore, HTML. This is going to remove some character limits on this field, which allows us to put a large blob of text into this field. And of course, we're gonna drop the length and leave it as nullable. The next field we're gonna make is gonna be called valid. We're gonna make this one just a simple number field that's nullable with a default of one. This is just to make our lookups easier in Amscript later on. Leave that one as those two fields and go create. So with our duct tension created, we'll jump back into our import activity. Let's go over to our folder that we built it in, XML folder, and there's our data extension we just created. Perfect. Let's go create and next. Now for our mapping, I'm going to choose overwrite for this one. But of course, if you're doing this as a delta file, you may want to choose a different option. We're not going to map on header row since there is no header row to use. We're going to use the map by ordinal, unticking the import file has column headers and leaving it as it is there. Now column one is going to be the blob and we're not going to have column two. It's not going to come through at all. Just column one as the blob HTML and then we'll go next. All ready to go. So we're only going to be mapping in the blob and not the valid and we'll go finish. That should now be our mapping done. So let's try it out. We'll save our automation with our import definition credit and we're going to run once. Running the import file and run. So let's now check and see how it's going. I'll check my activity tab and complete it in 10 seconds. Perfect. So if I jump back onto my data extension, of course we had zero rows. If I now click into it, hopefully we have some rows. And indeed we do 33 rows. Now if we jump back onto our documentation for the XML, I was gonna use the food menu today. But if I take a look for myself, this should be the file that we imported today. As you can see here, it's the breakfast menu foods. Back on my data extension, we can check the records and see what it looks like for ourselves. And straight away you can see breakfast menu, food, name, price. Breakfast menu, food, name, price, perfect. So it has imported each line as a new row in the data extension, and every row has the valid being equal to one, which will make my script lookup much easier later on. So we now have our disassembled XML stored in a data extension, which is half the battle. Our next step is going to be to reassemble the XML so we can use it in our emails for personalization. So let's now jump across into our content builder where I've got my existing cloud page testing code where I was showing how to use the build row set from XML. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. You can use a bit of this code now to start to reassemble the XML located in the data extension. So to start with, we don't want to set our XML as a static string because we now have a data extension to read it, to read it from. 
So what we need to do is reassemble that XML. So to start with, let's go set at raw XML is going to be equal to a lookup rows. Now lookup rows is of course going to have our three ordinals. One, two, three. Now ordinals are our data extension name. So I'll get my data extension name to start with. Place it into my content here. We're going to want to get the field to look up, which of course is valid, and the value to look up, which is one. Next, we're going to want to cycle through all the rows we've got because we have to reassemble the XML. So let's make ourselves a quick for loop, which I've got just here. So I copy my for loop and go next i. So we're going to be saying for the count of rows in that lookup rows, we're going to cycle through this row set. Now in this row set, we want to be assembling our new XML. So let's say set at XML is equal to nothing right now. But as we cycle through this raw XML set, we're going to be reassembling it. Instead, we'll say set XML to be equal to concat. And let's add XML to our new value from this raw set, this row set here. So we're going to get the field name value from our current row set. So from our raw XML rows on row I, as we cycle through this for loop, getting the field of, and we called our field what? It was the blob.html. So it could be blob.html and make that our field name to return. That should now be reassembling the XML into one single large string for us, which we can then output to check for ourselves. So let's now do an output line with a concat and we'll say the full XML equals, and then we'll output our brand new XML here. Perfect. Let's drop the rest of this for now. We don't need the rest of this. Actually, I want to keep that one for later, but we'll drop the rest of it. All right, and let's try it out for ourselves. We'll go save and refresh our cloud page. All right, that's our full XML. You can see there, Belgian waffles for $5.95. And indeed, our Belgian waffles were $5.95. Perfect. So we now have our working reassembled XML that we can go through and pass. Our next step is to use the build row set from XML to sift through that XML record and to read out each of the rows sets within it. So I'll take my set rows XML here and let's put it up the top here. We'll be reading our row set from the XML file, but it won't be the root flight like it was in the demo. We're using a different structure. It's going to be our fast food menu followed by food. So back in our content starts off as fast food menu and then food. This should give us a new set of rows. Now our full XML, which we was outputting earlier, was printing out that. Let's instead print out the row count for rows. So it will say, I'm going to concat this and we're going to do row count and read our rows. And it was the XML row count, just to make sure it's all working well. All right, we'll go save and then refresh our cloud page. No row count for now. Let's double check. Row count, of course, at rows. And beautiful, five rows. We'll just check our original XML. One, two, three, four, five food items. And of course, five XML rows returned. Perfect. So with our XML working, let's now try to output the name, price, and description values from each XML item. Now, quick tip, we can jump into our XML and just take a quick snapshot of these fields. This will make it easier for us to do the documentation of each of those values to output. Just put those values down here for now, just so we can reference them quickly. So we've now got our row set building. And we've of course counted how many rows there were in that row set. We now we have to cycle through those five rows. So let's make ourselves another for loop. So we'll pop a for loop in here, call this one R for rows. Of course, we're going to be cycling through our row count of rows. Now, once we do this, we want to build a new XML set. This is going to be what we're going to do for each of these values of name, price, description, and otherwise. So we're going to be making a new row set for the name. It's going to be from the breakfast menu food slash name. But it's not just from food though, because there's multiple food items in our XML structure. It has to know which food item to select. So in our content, we have to write in a square bracket the number to go through, which of course will be R 
as you cycle through our food row set. You can't just do that though, we do have to do this in a concat. Let's go concat. And I'll put that all in brackets. Of course, breaking the string with quotes and using commas to show each of those concat values. So here is our new structure. The name will of course be name. Do the same thing now for the other values. We want the price, we want the description, and of course the calories, why not? So the values are coming out now. These will be the XML row sets. Now this will just be the XML. So what I should do is go underscore XML. It's actually not quite done yet. There's a few more things we have to do. Once we have the XML set, we then have to get the field row sets for each of those. So I can copy my field and row values here. And what we can do is say it'll be the set name. The actual name now will be the field from the row. What's well, the row set of name XML. Oh, of course we've got name there, so we have to do the rest of these. Whoops. Name, price, description, and calories. There we are, that's all of them. So the name is the row set from name XML. That's row number one, there's only one row for it. And the field we want back is of course going to be the value because it sits between the object opening and closing, as you can see here. It's between the objects. So it's going to be the value. So I'll just say value. Do the same thing again, I can copy this down and I'll do the same with the price from the price XML. It'll be description from the description XML. And of course, calories from the calories XML. Okay, there's our values. And then once it's done all that, we can probably do an output to produce those values. So let's now make a nice output line to produce those values on our screen. So we're going to concat and say for the food item of name. So for name, it is a description equals, and let's output the description, comma, and then space. Let's do a pipe to break those up. And then we'll say that the price, oops, where's price, price, it's going to be equal to, there's a dollar, don't need a dollar sign in front, no, dollar sign's already there. So price is equal to, comma, price. And then for good measure, let's do the calories as well. So at calories. And then calories. Finishing off, of course, with a line break. That's nice and easy to read. With that all done, we can clean up our code, removing that sample code there we should be right to go. So let's try it out. We'll go save and then render this on our cloud page. F5. Perfect. Belgian waffles, strawberry berries, French toast and homemade breakfast with each of those prices, calories and so on. Fantastic. Now outputting these values on a cloud page or an email like we've done today is pretty useful. You could of course use this for personalization if your XML file was some products or recommendations. What's a little bit cooler is if you actually take this information and then push it into a data extension. Let's try and format this information now and push it into a brand new data extension. To start with, we'll have to make a data extension with all these values included. So jump back onto my data extensions. Let's make ourselves a new XML data extension. Because this one is our food items, I'm going to make this one as a food data extension. So we'll call this one XML food. And go next. Now our fields will be the same fields as our data has. We'll use name as our first field. Make sure there's plenty of space there for our name. We make that one our primary key just for good measure. We also want to go back into our files here and do price. Now price was text, so we'll leave it as text, nullable. The other fields we had was description, nice long field that one. Let's give it plenty of characters. And finally, it was our calories. Calories also leave as a text field, giving it, that should be enough characters there and make those nullable. So we'll now close out the data extension, making it as XML food. Perfect. With XML food done, we can go back onto our code and let's start to produce our upsert data extension function. So we go to my data extension documentation and do our upsert data. And this one's for a landing page. You of course could use upsert DE as well. And we'll do our upsert function. So let's take my sample code here, upsert data, and go back to my content. Outside of our for loop, of course, we're going to do our upset data function. The action should name will be that. Now our one field to match on, according to our documentation here, the field that we're going to match on and build our clause from 
will be our unique field that of course we just built, which is gonna be the name. Double check that, our dark extension primary key is our name field. Yes, it is. So we're using our one field, that's gonna be name. So it's called name. The value to use, of course, will be at name. There it is there. And now you put in the other fields you want to insert. So after name, we're gonna have the price field. So it'll be price as at price. Next is the description as at description. Then finally, it's gonna be our calories as at calories, done. This will have to upsert every time it comes to a new row. So with that one looking pretty good, I'll promote that into my for loop now. So it actually upserts them every time it runs through this script. And we are now ready to try it out. We have our name, our price description, all looking pretty good. So let's save this and we'll try it out by refreshing our cloud page. And it's done, completed, and we can check our dark extension now, zero rows, but if I click on records, boom, there is our five records. So as you can see, this nifty little trick is a great way that you can use to import your XML data from your FTP into Marketing Cloud for your use in personalization and data extensions. And so I hope you enjoyed today's walkthrough of how to import an XML file into Marketing Cloud. If you have, then please let me know with a comment and a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.